Yep. Mm-hmm. That's a car, all right? <laughs> Welcome everyone to another episode of Nurse Thomas. I'm Dr. Pants. I'm Lambo. We have a guest with us. This random person just wandered into our studio and sat down. Uh, it looked pretty inviting. <laughs> Turns out he knows something about video games. I've heard about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this is Tom. Hi. Everybody say hi, Tom. Hi, hi Tom. Tom. It's a pleasure to meet you. Tom, you, you, you designed levels for video games. I did for a while, yeah. yeah. For a pretty long time. Yeah, yeah so... so you're the first time we've ever had someone on here who knows what they're talking about. Yeah, I, I hope I do sometimes. Uh, you know, I like to trick people a lot into thinking I know something about them, and sometimes they believe me. So I, I Consider me already tricked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you tricked us enough to get you on the show. So, awesome. So awesome. there we go. Mm -hmm. um, so you used to design levels. Like, who, yes. did, who did you work for? So I worked for a lot of companies, actually. Uh, People who have heard about it may know that it's a pretty fluid industry. There's a lot of back and forth. And so I've worked for studios as big and well known as Midway Studios and Acclaim. Wow. And I have worked for studios that nobody's known, known about. A game like a company called Kingdom Games and another one called Inevitable. Yeah. See, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. So I've worked for quite a handful of places. I don't know. I, I want to believe I've heard of them, but that doesn't mean anything because there's so many companies yeah. out there anymore that like I lose track of who's who. I would doubt that you've heard of Kingdom Games because I don't believe they ever actually sh ended up shipping their title because that studio shut down. Yeah. Does that happen like often? That. Is that like like games get you know don't get really off the ground? Oh yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. I, I'd say half the games I've ever uh, seen been in production in a studio don't actually make it to wow. go. Like, mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes yeah. it can be pretty rough, and especially you, it's particularly vulnerable to being shut down if it's being made by an independent developer or a small studio. And those th that's a really risky venture to get into. Hmm. So it is, but I mean, we've talked about indie games on here before, and like yeah. they seem to be really rewarding at the same time because you get yeah. you get some really quality stuff. It's some passion it. projects and stuff. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's definitely a big difference between independent game development and corporate game development. Whereas you can tell that there's a lot more passion when people are the ones that are making their own product. Whereas in a more corporate environment or a bigger studio, there's a good chance you're making somebody else's game, and that's you know not as much passion there. Right. Uh, so. We know who you worked for. What kind of games have you worked on that have released that people might know about? So most of the games that I've worked on, personally, have always been like uh, action shooters. So that's a specialization I have. I would say that the biggest franchises I've worked on, uh, I'd, I've had the word Transformers in a few of my titles. So I worked on a yeah. game called Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark. I also worked on a pretty popular game or well-known franchise called Deus Ex. Uh, Very so cool. people know about that one. Okay. Um, I would say... Uh, my personal favorite is one that very few people have heard of, but I have had one fan actually like flip out when they heard that I made that. It was a game called Loadout that was on PC. And actually, uh, after I left the studio, they ended up shipping on a couple of consoles as well. I'm embarrassed to say I don't think I've heard of Loadout. That's perfectly fine. Most people <laughs> have it. It's just a, but it's a really fun game. I, I might have to check that out now. Mm -hmm. Especially if it came out on consoles, because I'm personally not a PC gamer. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a console gamer. He's a little bit more PC. Well, it's a multiplayer-only game, so at this point, if you actually manage to download it and manage to find people actually playing it, that would be pretty Ooh, that would be ah, impressive. Yeah. Okay, well then maybe I'll just have to get on PC, because yeah, I'm yeah. probably going to find more people on there playing it. Yeah. Okay, but that was your favorite one, Loadout? That was the favorite one I worked on, personally. I don't know if it was my favorite game of the ones that I worked on, but it was definitely the one I enjoyed okay. you know, developing the most. Okay, um, I, I want to ask, because I'm a big Transformers fan, yeah. um, and I'm, I'm just going to address the elephant in the room. Rise of the Dark Spark is not one of the more well-received Transformers no. games. No, it's not. Yeah. Um, uh, after War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron, Rise of the Dark Spark. For those who don't know, it was kind of a pseudo-sequel to that, but crossed mm -hmm. over with the Bayverse movies, and it kind of flopped. Yeah. Because right. it tried to take that gameplay, and just, it fell stale. Yeah, so there, yeah, there was definitely a lot of technology and a lot of content that was recycled from the previous titles. and But that wasn't made by the core studio that made the, the original game. Right, it was, because so. that was High Moon. Yes, that was High Moon, and High Moon had contracted out to us to go to make that particular game. And they say, well, here's a bunch of assets and here's some some story elements to try to make the game. And uh, yeah, it was it was a really tough project. We didn't really have much of a budget. I think our studio was pretty well known for making really good deals for a really bad price. <laughs> so, um, hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it had its uh, it had its uh, heartaches and failures. Sure. I, could you get a little bit more into it, like why it turned out the way it did? Just because, like, I I 
I don't think you deserve the 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 heat that like that game gets. And a lot of people will blame like, oh, there was no love in that project whatsoever, blah blah. And, um. Well, I would say. It depends on who you're talking to, because there's a lot of split ideas about the project. Again, like I said earlier, when we're talking about game development, it depends on the game that you're working on. I mean, if, is this your game? Then there's a good chance you're going to have a lot more passion for it. And the studio is kind of split on that. I mean, I was pretty excited to be able to work on a Transformers project. And not only that, I love the Transformers titles before that, so I thought it would be pretty fun. But not everyone was really into that. You know, we were just contracting out for something that didn't even belong to our studio. Yeah, and like there's got to be so many creative hands in the pot. Yeah, there's definitely you know? a lot of people in there. Um, like uh, I know that our director at the time, or the design director at the time, had a lot of trouble even working with this studio because he kept on having passion ideas that would get shot down by the studio. And in fact, mm. um, a lot of what he did got shot down at the very last minute and our entire game was like kind of riding on that getting passed. And so all of our content ended up getting developed in the past 10% of the game's development time. So, uh, was, so was, it was a rush project. It basically. was very, very, very rushed, yeah. I would say, for a very little amount of uh, uh, money and time, and our resources weren't great. And I have to admit, I wasn't actually full-time on the project, so that probably didn't help either, because we had two projects going on at the studio at the time, and they didn't want me spending 100% of my time on Transformers, because... I was actually the other one I was talking about was loadout. So <laughs> and, and loadout and you and loadout must have turned out well because you said it was, mm -hmm. yeah, it was the favorite that. one you worked yeah. on. So okay. um, so what we did for Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark is I was at that studio at the time I was the only level designer working in the entire studio. Really? Yeah, which is one of the reasons I loved working on loadout so much because oh. they gave me complete autonomy to do whatever I wanted. Wow, in that's so awesome. Like, yeah, they said. We don't know anything about level design. We need you to make some levels. I said, okay. And, but uh, then when they got the contract for Transformers Rise of Dark Spark and Ed Edge of Reality, which was the company I was working for at the okay. time, was primarily a tech studio. Um, they said, okay, well, we need to get a bunch of level designers for a very low cost. So you hired a bunch of completely fresh uh, fresh meat uh, out of the market. And tried to. I tried to give them some crash courses on level design practice and ideas. And it was... They actually, they came very far, I think, from when we first hired them. But at the end of the day, the, the time crunch really killed us. And I think, uh, I think we've talked about that before, too, is mm -hmm. like, you know, rushing games out as opposed to those games that seem like they get delayed and delayed yeah. and delayed. It's like, sometimes they need to be delayed. Yes. Sometimes you need that extra time because that things like that are happening yeah. in the background been, that we're not aware there's of. There's been a lot of stories coming out of game development, you know, where it's, you know... You know, bad working conditions because you're you're you know. Yeah, absolutely. And again, things at the yeah, end. And there's a lot of other factors. Like game development is a pretty complicated business as well as a process. And so there's a lot of factors that go into whether or not you know you can even spend that time on the game. Like mm -hmm. in an independent game, Blizzard made their own games for a long time, so they can push it off however long they want to. But when you're making another company's game, you have specific deadlines, and getting those deadlines pushed very hard to do. Right. It's, it's not easy. So if your game isn't as good as you'd like it to be by the time gold comes, it's, it's what you get. <laughs> you, you just deal with it. Yeah. You get you get something that's not as great or it's glitchy and you just patch it later. Yeah. Yeah. There, when I was working at Midway, there was this trick we developers used to do where when we tried to pass our compliance tests for the console, uh, console companies like Microsoft and Sony, um, if we thought we didn't like the game in its current state, but our uh, our corporate or corporate environment wanted us to push a game immediately. What we would do is we would deliberately make it so the game didn't work and wow. would pass compliance, so that wow. Microsoft would fail us, so that we had more time to work on stuff. And this wow. one time, the secrets. Now that was a really funny thing at the time because Sony was notorious for being very strict about their compliance testing, but mm. Microsoft they just wanted developers. That's it. So that that makes sense. The problem with that was that. We tried to fail the Microsoft compliance testing for more time, and then they passed us anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I, got, I got to ask, around what yeah. time was this? Because that might make a lot of sense for yeah, this. Yeah, this was the time uh, around, uh, I think it was Xbox 360 when it first came out. That, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, they just got off you know, got off the whole Xbox generation, and they began to realize that developers are the key to their income. Right. And so they were just desperate to get as many developers for as low a cost as possible. Mm -hmm. and, wow. so they, and so trying to fail their compliance test was actually pretty hard to do. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, but they were the ones really pushing indies and stuff around that time, too. Yeah. And I think they were letting a lot of, there was a lot of, you know, stuff in their live arcade that was oh my God, questionable. I love, I love the live arcade. I don't know, yeah. so many demos for dumb things there. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So good. Well, that I mean, that's really, really interesting because mm -hmm. I, I never knew anything about that. And that makes a lot more sense about why things end up the way they are. Mm -hmm. And I hope, 
If anyone's watching this, I know there's some of you watching this, but I'm hoping there's people out there watching this who are taking this in and understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Sounds really, really interesting, and we know what your favorite game you worked on is, and I'm really glad you talked about Rise of the Dark Spark, because I, like being a big Transformers fan, I, I know about that game, and the fandom I'm in, most people are like, this is garbage, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't that bad. It's no Transformers 2007 on the PSP. <laughs> right. Yeah. That was... Right. That's an abomination of a game. Mm -hmm. Can we show the abomination? I, I, if you want. There it is. I've actually played it. <laughs> yeah? So when I worked at GameStop, I actually signed out a copy of Transformers 2007 on the PSP when I yeah. first got my PSP to try it, and I couldn't get past the first level. <laughs> so bad. On that note, though, so we got to ask because, you know, you worked in game development. What are your favorite games, though, to, like, play? So uh, I... I can go back and forth between a lot of different things. I like to tell people I'll play any game that's not a sports game because I'm, I'm really into sports. But uh, I, I think most of the time, I spend most of my time playing first-person shooters and RPGs. So You would fit in well here. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's what we spend most of our time playing. I've been playing uh, Apex Legends a lot lately. Um, Diablo 2 Resurrected just came out oh, yeah. recently. And I, didn't I think we're going to pick that up around like the holidays when we have a little more time to like... Yeah. like yeah. Put a couple of good runs yeah. in, and then mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, as m I, I knew that because I like back when Diablo two came out, I must have put over like a thousand hours in that game. But <laughs> like this game came out, and then just a few weeks later, Back for Blood and Far Cry six came out. Yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Well, I yeah. can't. Yeah, we've been playing Back for Blood. <laughs> we, we, yeah, it's so good. We got Game Pass, so we're playing yeah. Back for Blood and yeah, uh, yeah. Far Cry six was actually uh, <laughs> I think Punk and Dad are playing that right now. Yep. We opted for Metroid Dread. Yeah. Because that was the other big game that came out then. Oh, I see. Yeah, I I, I assume that's, of course, the Nintendo price. Oh, yeah. I don't absolutely. actually have any consoles right now, and I wish I'd... Well, I ha yeah. that's not true. I do have a uh, Switch Lite, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I honestly, my primary Nintendo platform is a Switch Lite, because yeah. my, my, oh, yeah. main, my main Switch has taken a heck of a beating. Oh, wow. And uh, he doesn't sound so good when he boots yeah. up. He's got some chunks out yeah. of him, so... Dribbles. I got, he dribbles. He dribbles a little bit, so... <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I played Metroid Dread on the Switch Lite, and uh, I mean, it was a really, really great side-scrolling action game. But we'll talk about that in another episode. Yeah, yeah. But, okay. but uh, I mean, we're big first-person fans too. Uh, we play a lot of Rainbow Six Siege. I haven't played. Oh, actually, I played like uh, Rainbow Six a long time ago. I don't think I ever played Siege. Si Siege is like it's 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 what the original one tried to be really hard. Right. Right. Yeah. And it's, yeah. It's from running. Now, now it's in like the it's the best it's ever been. Yeah. yeah. And and uh, in all honesty, if you ever want to pick it up and hop in with us, feel free. Is it cross-platform? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, wow. Okay. Well. That's and we're moving over to apply to the Xbox soon once, yeah. once uh, everything nice. opens up. They're going to do cross save so we can transfer yeah. our stuff from PlayStation over to that. And yeah. yeah. We'd rather do that. So yeah, if you ever want to hop in with us, like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I'll just try and pick it up and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, so I had two more questions, but you kind of like answered them a little bit. It was like, <laughs> what would you like people to know about game design? And you kind of went into that. Kind of. There, I mean, there's definitely a lot of things that I could say about game design. I think... Uh, I, I wanted to avoid like getting too defensive about my position or anything, but one of the things I think I, want, I would like people to know is game development is hard. It's, it takes a lot of effort, and one of the biggest like stabs in the chest I hear people say online is lazy developers. That just oh. like you mm. don't know, man. You just don't understand. Mm. <laughs> it's not that easy. Yeah, and I mean, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're we're, we're teachers in our other <laughs> in our other life. <laughs> you know, I, I, I hear things said <laughs> yeah. once in a while, but no, no, but, but absolutely, no, no. But I do see that a lot. You know, you're yeah. right. Yeah, like right. you don't know what, yeah. what the game developed. And know, when they say developer, they they talking about it like it's one person. Or yeah, they talking that's about true. it like it's one. There, there's so many you know? things that goes on. I mean, there's a lot of semantics about what you technically call yeah. a developer, not a developer. But uh, like uh, people talk about bugs, and they'll say things like, "Did they even test this game?" And my answer to that is, I guarantee you, they tested it <laughs> and they found that bug, and they triaged it because for every one bug you find. They fixed about a hundred others, so I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, there's also, and I, I recently found out about this because I was watching uh, Game Grumps play Sonic Heroes, and they brought up that one of the developers for that said that when they were finding bugs, the develop like the head developer said, unless it breaks the game, ignore it. Exactly. Yeah. For the most part, your priority is to get that game shipped, right, and to make sure that it's playable and you can get from front to back without, you know. Crashing 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So yeah. that, and in today's world, there's like you can patch it after the fact, and yeah, you know there's less true. of a, a concern. And also, I mean, it's probably the idea that a lot of games nowadays there's so many facets to it. We're in yeah. such big game territory that, like, people discover bugs after playing it because there's just almost too much to test out. I yeah. would imagine. Yeah. Like game walking every direction with every weapon over every area over every yeah. pixel, like it's, a certain. Yeah, games I mean, have become so much more complicated than yeah. they used to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe. 
maybe people that play the game that find bugs are just good at testing them. Yeah, yeah, a good yeah. call. Yeah. <laughs> I went to the top of this mountain, I spun around two times, tried to switch my weapons and open the pause menu at the same time and it broke the game. <laughs> how dare the developers, are <laughs> so lazy. Lazy developers, how dare they? So, um, yeah. uh, when are we going to make a game? <clears throat> oh. Uh, so, <laughs> did we bring this up last stream or the stream before? We talked about, yeah. like, um, we actually... Uh, Clearly I haven't been watching. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> that, that's one more really good question. If you could make a game, because you, you're not really doing game development right now, but if you could go back and do one, yeah, I think what about, would you like to do? I think about that all the time, and I have to admit, like any reasonable developer out there, I have a stray folder sitting on my hard drive with, that's an, with an Excel spreadsheet that's about you know 200 lines long. Mm -hmm. and, and every single one of them is an idea or a derivative of an idea, and maybe one day I'll go back to it. And I've got another folder called Projects that has tons of things that I started and never even really continued. Mm. Wow. So I think um, right now, one of the things I wouldn't mind doing is I would really like to make a roguelike or a roguelite. And that's one of my favorite indie genres. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're, they're that's popular a, as all heck right now. Yeah, yeah. that's a big oh, yeah. thing right now. Because, I, I mean, isn't Back for Blood technically like... Yeah, kind of. Actually, it kind of has a roguelike vibe. I was going to yeah. say, I, I can never remember the difference between yeah. roguelike and roguelite. Yeah, yeah roguelite just means it has elements of, of the, the original rogue yeah. you know, game. And um, I, I think uh, the light version, it kind of emphasizes the fact that you er, every iteration you play through, you get, depending on your, your accomplishment, you get some sort of level yeah. up or strengthening yeah. it. And then the roguelike is it's basically a ripoff of rogue. Yeah, and oh, roguelike means yeah. you don't carry over anything. You just die, yeah. you die. Oh, okay. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, but that is a popular genre. I've even gotten into a couple of them that I've really enjoyed. So, I mean, that could be cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we could do that. I think we jokingly said we would make a dating simulator where you would date waifu versions of the Nurturamus <laughs> crew. That's interesting. But uh, <laughs> it wouldn't be hard to put, to, to put together, bro. Yeah. I would think you know? so. I have to. No. I've never played a dating simulator. So like, I don't know how they, like they they can range from being like pretty in, in depth and you know complicated to being like super basic, where oh, yeah. it's just basically like a text adventure mm -hmm. that goes in like one direction. You make occasionally make a decision. Oh, right. Okay. Like you know? the like the KFC dating <laughs> simulator that existed. A what? Years back. You knew about that. What? No. <laughs> yes, when we were... T okay. Go on. So, you remember when we played Cold Hearts, the one yeah. we dated fridges? Yeah, the fridge game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can we post a link to that up yeah. there? Um, the, uh, the one fridge is kind of... Kind of hot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Still waiting for that game to finish development, by the way. Um, but there was a KFC simulator where I think you dated Colonel Sanders. R were you a chicken? No, you were just a person. Oh, lame. S a slow tad suggested to us, I think, or punk. Like one of the two suggested. You know what? Now that you say, I, like, I have an inkling of something in the back of my head. Okay, yeah. Tom, do you have That's anything good. else to say to everyone about all this, or anything else you want to say? Oh no, I think everyone should get out there right now and download the uh, the latest free version of whatever game editor that you'd like and start making games. Because the more they're out there, the happier everyone is. Oh yeah. That's that. There you go. There's an endorsement. Give it a shot. Go out and try and make your passion project. Live your dreams. Make the game you want to play, and then never play it. Because <laughs> there's too much to play as it is. Yeah. But no, honestly, give it a shot. I'd always love to try and do that. I can just never find the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. Maybe we can work something out. We yeah, can all get maybe, together and make hey, something. Yeah. a good idea and a good art style. That's all you need to get, to get started. Are any of us to artists? Get, to get started, now. Yeah. Oh, Slow Tad. Yeah, yeah, Slow Tad. Slow Tad is an artist. So yeah. Slow Tad, we're, we're, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Anyway... Thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, you know, all that good stuff. And uh, ring the little bell because you'll get notifications when we're putting out videos and when we go live because every Friday night for over a month now, we have gone live every Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to stream. Uh, so make sure to follow us there. But for Nurse Drama, I'm Dr. Pants. Lambo. Tom. Thank you, Tom, for being here. We really appreciate it. And we'll catch you all some other time. <laughs>